Hello, I am Bumi Banjo and you are welcome to The Maximum, a platform where you're equipped with the Word of God to live your life at the max and become all that God has called you to be. And I am happy to journey with you. Would you come with me today? Let's go into part two of the Jesus series. Let's go. Hey, I want to advise you to take the time to watch the part one of the Jesus series because part one provides a backdrop of what led to the fall of man in the Garden of Eden and how Jesus is God's strategy to reconcile mankind back unto him. But today we're going straight into part two. But before we do, please do me a favor and like this video, <laughs> share it with your family and friends, subscribe to this channel if you're yet to, and click the notification bell icon so you can get more videos as soon as we upload them. Let's go straight into part two, the Jesus series. Today we're talking about Jesus, God's love revealed. The book of 1 John chapter 4, verse 9 to 10 in the Berean Study Bible says, this is how God's love was revealed among us. God sent his one and only son into the world so that we might live through him. And love consists in this, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as the atoning sacrifice for our sins. We are loved unconditionally with no strings attached. The Bible says God sent his one and only son, Jesus Christ, into the world so that we might live through him. And that was the antidote for the fall of man that death came in and became the wages of the sin of man. But Christ was sent to us by God as his love revealed among us so that we can live because of Jesus Christ. You know, the book of John chapter 3 verse 16 said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world. God's love is magnanimous, it's generous, it's lavish. And if it is you out there who are doubting the love of God, Perhaps because man has rejected you, perhaps because man has hurt you and you just can't find how could God love you when all this rejection and all this hurt is surrounding you. I want you to know God is not man. Man is not God. God is everlasting in his love. He is unconditional in his love. He is lavish in his love. He is magnanimous in his love. He is generous in his love. He does not look at what you and I have done or even what we deserve to love us. He loves us despite and in spite of who we are and what we have done. So I want you to embrace the love of God. Know that if God could give you his best, if he could give you his one and only son, then he loves you and he does uncomfortable conditionally. You don't have to perform for God to love you. You don't have to be the best for God to love you. He already sees you as his best, his handiwork. So revel in that, be joyful in that, enjoy that and feel that love. God bless you. All right, so let's continue. I just stopped by to tell you that God so loved you that he gave his only begotten son so that if you believe in him, you can have eternal life. Amen. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 4, verse 19, he said, We love him because he first loved us. That is, we re reciprocate that love just because God first loved us. Okay? And the benefits we derive from God's love in us, they are endless. They are too numerous to count. But I just want to share with us today a few of those benefits. In his love, we are forgiven. In his love, we are forgiven. No sin is too big. No sin is too small that God cannot forgive. In fact, God forgave us when he gave us Jesus Christ. 
that when we embrace that love of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 17 says, For this reason, he, Jesus, had to be made like his brothers, that's you and I, in every way, so that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in service to God, in order to make atonement for the sins of the people. He became a merciful and faithful high priest. You know, the book of Lamentations in chapter 3, I believe from verse 22, to 23 says that through the Lord's mercies we are not consumed because his compassions fail not and his mercies are new every morning that means if you sinned yesterday the mercies of God are already waiting for you this morning to wake up to attend to you to guarantee you forgiveness if you ask for it Jesus Christ is a merciful and a faithful high priest this is one of the benefits that we have in christ that we are forgiven we are forgiven because of god's love for us john chapter 1 verse 29 in the niv version says the next day john saw jesus coming toward him and said look the lamb of god that takes away the sins of the world taking away our sins is also equal to being forgiven and in his love number two we are reconciled back unto God and we are reunited in spirit with God our Father. In his love we are reconciled back to God and reunited in spirit with God our Father. Remember this series is a teaching series and that's why we're going line upon line, precept upon precept and we are using the word as our solid foundation so that you can know exactly how God feels about you and I, okay? Romans chapter five verse 10 says, for if when we were enemies of God, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more having been reconciled shall we be saved through his life god didn't only forgive us in his love jesus restored the broken relationship that we had with god our father so remember that because the sin of disobedience came in there was a severance of our life with god's life but because of jesus christ there has now become a fusion again the relationship has been restored and now we walk again as those who belong to the father and enjoying all the benefits in jesus christ hebrews chapter 8 verse 12 says for i will forgive their iniquities and will remember their sins no more he promised to forgive and forget you know <laughs> as human beings we forgive but depending on exactly what you did to us and how you know uh, what the import of what you did is how it affected us we very well may never forget but not god when god forgives he forgets in fact the bible says in the book of jeremiah chapter 50 verse 20 it says in those days and at that time declares the lord a search will be made for israel's guilt for your guilt for my guilt but there will be none haters will search for your guilt and for my guilt the devil will search for your guilt and my guilt, and there will be none. And for Judah's sins, but they will not be found. For I, the Lord, will forgive the remnant that I have preserved. God says he will forgive our sins and our iniquities he will remember no more. So revel in that, rejoice in that. Again, in his love, he made us family. In his love, Jesus made us family. The book of 1 John chapter 3 verse 1, the NIV version says, See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we shall be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. His love brought us from being servants to becoming his children. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 5 to 6 in the Amplified Version, let's look at that. It says, He predestined and lovingly planned for us to be adopted to himself as his own children. We're not children of the devil. We're children of God through Jesus Christ in accordance with the kind intention and good pleasure of his own will. It was his pleasure 
his good pleasure in fact and his will for you and I to become children of God right to the praise of his glorious grace and favor which he so freely bestowed on us in the beloved his son Jesus Christ I don't know about you but it's one thing to be a friend it's another thing to be a child and God loved us so much that through Jesus Christ he drew us to himself, not as servants, not as slaves, but as his own children. He is our father. So that when we pray, we go to our father, just like if you went to an earthly father who is really good. And when you go and approach him, he comes with open arms and he's willing to listen to what you have to say. He loves you. He smiles at you. He approves you. It's the same relationship that Jesus Christ now gave us with the Father to be his children, to be loved, to be dotted upon, to be cherished, you know, to want the best for kind of relationship. I love this relationship. It's like my favorite relationship in the world. I don't so much as want what God has to give me, but I want that relationship of being called his child. That is the best relationship I think any one of us can desire. Because when, as a parent, I want to give my child the best. So when I think about that, I'm thinking that it means that there is nothing, absolutely nothing God cannot give me. If as an earthly parent, I desire to give my child everything I have. I work so that my child can get food. I, I go out early in the morning and take on everything the world has to offer just because I want to be able to give my child some comfort. How much more God who is now saying, call me your father, call me daddy. And in that position as daddy i can take my position as the child and just receive all the love receive all the attention that god my father is willing to give me that for me is just the best deal anybody can ask for and i got that deal i have access to that deal only through jesus christ and his love for us so in his love we are family we have been adopted we have been accepted into the beloved adopted into god's family because of our big brother jesus christ the bible says in john chapter 1 verse 12 but all who did receive him to those who believed in his name he gave the right to become the children of god <laughs> he gave the audacity to become the children of god would you take on that relationship and everything that it offers today you are no longer an outsider you are a child of god i'm no longer a slave to fear i am a child of god just paraphrasing that song, just taking a one-liner from that song. I want you to just breathe in, breathe out. And remember that you are a child of God. Breathe out fear. Breathe out anxiety. Breathe out worry. Breathe out doubt. And take in, inhale the reality of who you are. That you are a child of God. You are valuable. Hmm. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 9, he said, we shall exercise our sonship in prayer. Listen to what he said. When ye pray, say it like this. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. We love your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. Before we begin to ask for anything, he said, first of all, establish your sonship. The fact that you are a child of God. And within that position, then begin to ask anything you want to ask. Give me, O oh Lord, this day my daily bread. Ah, that is mm, just premium. I don't want to go on and on and on. I want to stop here on this point. That you are a child of God. In his love, God has made you a child of God. Join me on the next episode as we continue jesus god's love revealed part two or now part three of the jesus series i'll see you soon remember share like all those good things subscribe click the notification bell icon i'll see you soon